feeling more comforted afterward, but it's Friday. Coming up. President Trump breaking yet another presidential norm, taking on the head of the Federal Reserve, the head of the Federal Reserve that he appointed. That's next. How do you? He's a good guy, but whatever follows that is never a good thing when it's coming from your boss. But that's what Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell is facing this morning. Breaking with decades of presidential tradition, President Trump is publicly weighing in and criticizing an action taken by the Federal Reserve. Listen. Yeah. I, I put a very good man in the Fed. I don't necessarily agree with it because he's raising interest rates. I'm not saying that I agree with it, and I don't Real necessarily guy agree too. with it. I yeah. must tell you, I don't. Yeah. Uh, I'm not thrilled uh, because, you know, we go up, and every time you go up, they want to raise rates again. And I don't really, uh, I am not happy about it. Uh, but at the same time, I'm letting them do what they feel is best. The president didn't stop there, continuing his complete break from well-established White House policy, taking to Twitter to criticize the Fed once again this morning. In one, in one bit saying the U.S. is raising rates while the dollar gets stronger and stronger with each passing day, taking away our competitive edge. Also saying debt coming due and we are raising rates. Really? Okay, so now what? Joining me right now, Stephen Moore, CNN Economics, senior economics analyst and former Trump economic advisor. Great to see you, Stephen. <laughs> Hi, Kate. So for decades, it is well established that a president does not comment basically at all on the Fed or Fed actions out of respect for their independence. Does this concern you? You heard from President Trump? Well, look, let me correct you on that. Uh, I've followed this for a long, long time, for over 30 years. It, it actually is not true that presidents uh, don't try to intervene in Fed policy. And I'm not saying this approvingly, but we know going back to Richard Nixon that presidents always try to get uh, the Fed to ease up and to keep low, low interest rates to help the economy, especially in election time. So this is nothing new, the kind of trying to bully uh, the independence of the Fed. I do wait, believe, wait, by the but way, you're that cool. the So wait, 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 you're not cool with this. You're, wait, are you cool with this? I'm not, I don't think it's a good idea, but I'm saying it it's just happens. I mean, this is the nature of politics. Every president wants low interest rates because they want more jobs in the economy to boom. And incidentally, you know, we just got a new economic uh, statistic out this morning, Kate, that unemployment insurance claims are now as low as they've been since the Beatles were still playing back in 1969. So the, the economy is just booming right now. You've got the kind of best of all worlds in this economy where you have really low unemployment, high growth and low unemployment. Now, I've talked to Donald Trump about this issue about Fed policy. Uh, okay. He and I had a lot of discussions about this. He believes, look, think about this, Kate. Do, how did Donald Trump make his money? He's a real estate guy, right? He does real yeah. estate investing. Real estate people love low interest rates, right? So he, I think he looks at the world in that prism of, of trying to keep rates low. I happen to think that but the, doesn't you know, your the prism Fed need is to doing change just fine. When you become president, it's not day one of his presidency, Steve. Well, look, I mean, as I said, you know, he, he basically said he, he, he likes Powell, as you said, Powell, who is the C, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, is independent. Uh, I don't think he's probably going to influence his decisions by based on what Donald Trump said. Incidentally, you could make the case that Trump is right. I don't see a I don't see a lot of inflation out there right now in the economy. I mean, you go to the stores. I mean, gas prices have risen a little bit in recent times, but we don't see raging inflation. And Trump's point and and there's something to this is you know why try to snuff out this growing economy with low inflation by raising interest rates and incidentally if rates go up that might make it more expensive for the federal government to borrow and as you know the biggest borrower in the world today is the u.s federal government so that will make well, the deficit situation I say, worse I, I will say i will admit and say one thing i do not i, I would not yeah. say i've made it a practice of tracking every statement about the federal reserve actions that every president has <laughs> yeah. made in presidential yeah. history but beyond right. Nixon, I mean, in recent memory, this is this is not normal. Can we just establish that this is not normal with the president would be coming out like this? Well, Kate, it's, here, let, let me put it like this. You're okay. right. that it's, it's very it's not normal that a president would publicly, you know, go after the Fed. But I do know this presidents privately try to nudge the 
Fed in the direction of lower interest rates because, you know, no president wants to see rates go up to try to snuff out the economy. So I think the difference between this president and past presidents is, you know, pre President Trump is doing, you know, saying these things publicly, whereas most presidents Which I think is a big uh, difference. make these kind of declarations. I think it's a big difference Sorry? because well, I think I think that is a big difference, yeah. though, coming out publicly and saying it, because let me pose this one to yeah. you. Larry Summers came out with a tweet. Of course, he's Obama was Obama, Obama's economic advisor. Um, he yeah. says that he thinks this now forces the Fed's hand. He tweeted that it's like will likely result likely result of presidential intervention is higher rates as Fed needs to assert its independence. Do you do you see that? Uh, you know, I, I hope not. But look, Larry Summers was the chief economist for Obama. Obama never got us to anywhere near three percent growth. We got you know Trump in, and look, my point is, let's so start giving Donald don't Trump the benefit of the Larry doubt. Summers when says. it comes to the economy, you got four and a half percent growth. You've got the lowest unemployment rate virtually in 30, 40 years. You got low inflation. I mean, whatever Trump is doing on the economy, it sure is working because we've got these you know tremendous conditions right now. And you know, as I mentioned, the new unemployment numbers came out today. Yeah. They're very positive. So, you know, all these people, my point is, all these people like Larry Summers have second guessed everything Donald Trump has done. And yet you look at the results so far and it's hard to argue that this guy hasn't been a really good uh, custodian of our economy. Um, okay. would, you, would you accept that notion? <laughs> okay. I so, Stephen Moore, so, you know, I look, accept the, everything. The Fed today. should be independent. You and I agree on this. The Fed should be independent. The president, Congress should not be intervening in what they what they are doing. Uh, it's the just Fed that does this make is mistakes, not the first though. time, I mean, right? The, the first time that the, that President Trump is is done, broken from a norm, if we want to say it that way. It, he he <laughs> tweeted well, about unempl the unemployment numbers before they came out. We can go through a laundry list of things. And I just wonder. And I don't even have time to run the soundbite. But in the CNBC article yeah. interview, Stephen, he even acknowledged that he wasn't supposed to be doing it. He's saying, I'm saying something I said as a private citizen, so somebody's going to well, say, oh, maybe you shouldn't say that as a president. And he says, I couldn't care less that they say that. But he should Well, the fact... <laughs> the Fed is independent. By the way, I don't believe the president can fire the chairman of the Federal Reserve. I should look he that up, but I, I think I you know, he is totally there independent. There is a way, apparently, for cause. But <laughs> okay. your definition of for cause and the president's definition of for cause might be slightly different. Yeah, but, Kate, okay, one, one thing that presidents normally do is the people that they select to be the chairman of the Federal Reserve are people who agree with their economic positions. And, look, do you um, think, you know, do you think, Trump do you basically think picks Powell someone... Doesn't? I think he does. I think there's an honest disagreement right now among economists okay. about whether the Fed should be raising interest rates. And, you know, I think it's a, as a, my own opinion is a close call one way or the other. Trump. Okay. But again, Trump is a real estate guy. He loves low interest rates. He wants to keep those interest rates low. And, you know, you look at the inflation rate right now, it's hard to say there's a, a compelling case for higher interest rates. I'm an independence guy. That's what I am. I land on the <laughs> independent side of things. Great to see you, Steve. Well, you do a lot of shopping, Kate. When you go out and shop, <laughs> are you finding the prices are rising dramatically for things? I mean, uh, you go to you Walmart today, thing, you, you know don't see I'm the prices, prices rise. rise. You know where I've seen prices rise? <laughs> Dairy and other yeah, well, <laughs> other commodities that are being hit by tariffs right now. That's and gas what I'm at saying. the pump, you know, so that's true. <laughs> Good to see you, Yeah, Steven. but look at cell phones, look at look at all the kind of technologies, and those are going down in price. All so, right, I see uh, what know, we're I doing next time. We're, we're just going to go shopping. Right I, that's why I see our next interview <laughs> is going shopping for something. We'll see. Your idea of shopping mine okay. might be slightly different, though. All right, great to We're going to, to Walmart, you, though. That's where prices are low. <laughs> I've, I've got a, the, the best super Walmart in the country is in my hometown. I'm just saying. Thanks. Thanks, Stephen. It was a jaw dropping moment. The U.S. spy chief flabbergasted on stage about an invitation for Putin to visit the White House. Why didn't he know? Why wasn't he given a heads up before the announcement? And what does it say about the current state of affairs in the administration? Does it mean anything for Dan Coates' future? I have nothing but questions, it appears. We're going to find out next.